In this quick tutorial, we'll learn how we can render Cinema 4D's MoGraph and filled colors using Arnold Render. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Make sure to visit our website MoGraph Plus or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash MoGraph Plus and check out our premium rendering and motion graphic courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, Viri, Maxwell and so on. I have this very basic MoGraph setup with a few effectors and fields and together they give these purplish colors where the clones are higher and this cyanish color when they are lower. Now let's see how Arnold Render can read this color data from the cloners and render them. If we create a new Arnold standard surface shader and assign it to our clones, let's run the IPR as well. You notice the colors are gone both in the viewport and they are not showing up in the render as well. That's because Arnold can't read the MoGraph color data by default. Let's middle click on the material to open up its network editor. To read the colors from your MoGraph setup, you need a node called user data RGB. So press Ctrl and Tab and get a user data RGB node. This node can read existing attributes in your scene, both custom and native. And one of the native attributes is the display colors of your clones. And you can define that attribute in this attribute field. If you click on this arrow besides the attribute field, we can read bunch of X-Particles attributes or we can select this display color from our MoGraph setup. So let's choose that. And if this arrow doesn't exist, you manually type in display color to load that attribute. Now that we have this attribute loaded in, I can simply connect the output of the user data RGB node to the base color input of the standard surface shader. And now we get our clone colors in our Arnold render. Let's just set the base weight to 1 so we are using the full range of our color data and that's how you do it. While we are here, we can do a few cool things. I can simply add a color correct node after the user data RGB node. And use the hue shift value to get an entirely new set of colors for my clones. For now, let's set the hue shift to zero to get the original colors back. Now let's do a bit more. I just want to simply multiply the existing color data with a random black and white value per clone. So first we need to generate those black and white colors per clone. And to do so, we can use a simple color jitter node and set it as the beauty shader for now. I'm gonna set the input color to black and under the object section set the gain mean to zero and max to one. And now we have this random grayscale clones. Now we can get a multiply node, connect the color correct node as the first input and the color jitter as the second input and use the multiply node as the beauty shader. I'm going to set gain min to 0.5 so we don't get very dark clones and set the max to 1.5 to get a bigger range of colors. Now set the multiply node as the base color for the standard surface shader. And connect the standard surface shader as the beauty shader. And that's it. Hopefully you learned something. Subscribe for more. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium rendering and motion graphic courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, Viri, Maxwell and so on. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos from Mograph Plus. See you in the next video folks.